Hi, my name's Isaac, and this is a brand new 2023 Mazda CX-50 Premium Plus package. And today, I'm gonna review it for you guys. Now, you might be watching this video thinking to yourself, well, I already have a CX-5. Why would I want a CX-50? What's the difference? Well, my friend, there is a whole host of differences between these two SUVs. I mean, for starters, there's like 45 numbers in between them. Before we begin, I'd like to thank Scott Mazda for allowing me to borrow this vehicle to review. For all your Mazda needs, I'll leave a link to Scott's website in the description below. All joking aside, there's not actually 45 models in between the CX-5 and the CX-50. There's not like a CX-28. Now, maybe someday there will be, but actually this CX-50 is the brother to the CX-5, a little bit more off-road oriented. As we walk around the vehicle, I'll talk about some of those features in a little bit. You'll have LED headlights up here with LED daytime running lights and LED turn signals incorporated into the lower part of the front fascia. And then in the center here, you'll have your sensor for the radar guided cruise control and the lane keeping assist, all the safety features that this comes with. There's also a camera for that incorporated up above the mirror in the windshield. Now this SUV retains Mazda's corporate front fascia look, but I still think it's very aggressive and does a good deal to stand out on its own, especially with the matte black fender flares that this includes and the kind of wider stance that this has compared to some of the other SUVs that Mazda offers. Underneath the hood, this CX-50 is powered by a 2.5 liter inline four cylinder, making a healthy 187 horsepower and 186 pound-feet of torque. And that is paired to a six-speed Sky Active automatic transmission. Moving to the profile of the CX-50, I wanted to start down here actually more on the front with this little vent right here. I forgot to mention it in the front end section. This is like a half functional vent. It's actually kind of funny. The upper portion is closed off, but the lower portion is functional. It looks like they just didn't want to include that lower portion and it might not flow as well with the rest of the lines on this. So it's kind of a, a half functional vent. That is pretty funny and a neat little touch. Now, if we move over here, you see the aforementioned blacked out fender flares giving this a little bit more of an aggressive look especially compared to the rest of Mazda's lineup. These really nice 20 inch wheels with 245-45R Goodyear Eagle Touring tires. Now as I mentioned up top there is an off-road mode in this and it's a little bit more aggressive though I don't know how well those tires would work off-roading. They're not very beefy though I'm sure there is options for a little bit thicker tire and a little bit smaller wheel. This is more of the luxurious version of this particular SUV. And then if we move to the mirror cap here, it is blacked out with kind of a gloss black look. And then you do have your turn signal incorporated into it. And this does have blind spot monitoring as well as keyless entry. Very nice to see, kind of expect to see that on here. And then this particular one comes with roof racks, which is really nice. You'll get the Mazda logo incorporated right there. Always cool to see if you wanna throw some kayaks up there, maybe even a canoe, you can absolutely do that. The nice matte black body cladding continues here to the back and then you'll have more of those vents though these are non-functional in the rear though what are functional are your dual exhaust right here that's really cool to see especially on a small suv like this now this is an all-wheel drive option of course i would expect nothing less from this top trim and then you'll have your backup camera incorporated right there and let's pull out the key because there's a couple of different ways to open this rear lift gate. Now, of course, there is a button next to the backup camera. You can tap that. That will open the lift gate. But the key also has the ability to open the lift gate here. If we tap that button, pretty basic key. It says Mazda here on the front and the buttons are actually on the side. Kia does this as well. I like that design. It's very unique. And then if we move in here, you'll have CX-50. Oh, that's bright. Let's see if we can tone that down. 
You'll have CX-50 incorporated into the carpet right here, and then you'll have two latches to release the second row seats back here. They are manual, so you just pull that, and they will fold forward. So that gives you much better cargo space in there. You could fit so much. Giant sheets of plywood, a TV, the possibilities are endless with the storage in this thing. Now, there is of course a button up here to drop and raise the tailgate as well. I don't know how you get to that button if uh, it was closed, but what you can do is you can actually stop it halfway there and you can re-raise it up if you want uh, from that button, so that's nice. And then you can also lock the tailgate uh, or actually lock the car from the tailgate. So let's say you're leaving, just hit that lock button, it's gonna lock the car and then you can walk away. One last thing I wanted to touch upon on the key fob before we move to the interior. I thought this was so cute, I guess is the best way to describe it. Now you have lock, unlock your tailgate, and then you also have this little exclamation point. You're like, well, what's that little exclamation point? That is your panic button. There you go. So that's your panic button. There's no little hazard triangle. It's a little exclamation point. I really like that attention to detail. That is a nice little touch. So without further ado, let's look at the interior. Moving to the interior of the CX-50, this plays host to a lot of very unique styling cues and amazing features. Let's start here on the door panel, as I often do. Up here you'll have a fairly comfortable leatherette material for you to rest your arm on. And then moving a little further down, you'll have this accent stitching which continues all the way across the entirety of the dash onto the other door. That is a very cool styling cue. And then if we head back here, you'll have your standard window controls, your mirror controls. Notably, this does have power folding mirrors right here and then you'll have lock, unlock, pretty standard. And then over here, you'll have some of the controls for your safety system, your automatic lowering and raising lift gate, and then these are two memory modes for the driver's seat's power system, so you can set what's comfortable for you, and then it will return to that position if you tap that button. If we move up here to the steering wheel, it's pretty standard. You'll have your volume controls right here, your channel changing, Bluetooth information right there, and radar guided cruise control settings right here. Now something that I think is really unique is this gauge cluster. At first glance, it looks like a pretty traditional one with normal gauges, and while these two are normal gauges, this is actually a center screen. You can control that with the steering wheel controls, and as you can see, you can go through a lot of different options for driver information and whatever mode you're in. That is really cool, and it adds to the really neat premium feeling aesthetic that this vehicle offers. I would hope it feels premium feeling because that's part of the name of this specific trim. And then if we move down here, you'll have your climate controls. That's built into this small screen here. You'll have digital readouts so you can turn up and turn down the specific temperature. Now this is synced right now because this does have dual zone. So if you wanted to turn the heat up all the way over here, you could do that. And then you'll have your different adjustment zones controlled with this little guy right there. And then of course your fan speed. Below that, you'll have your hazards, your heated and cooled seats. The cooled seats are very nice for a day like today, though I'm probably gonna leave them off because I'm sure that's pretty loud on the microphone. One thing I wanted to talk about that I thought was very interesting on this dashboard and definitely one of those unique styling cues is the climate vents. So right here you'll have two normal climate vents on either side of the steering wheel and over here you'll have a pretty normal climate vent basically blends into the rest of the aesthetic but they've actually snuck a hidden climate vent in right here to this trim line of the dash that's very unique. I don't know if I've ever seen that on a vehicle. Um, it's kind of a hidden climate vent right there. So that's a cool little touch. And really, you don't notice it other than the chrome piece right here that sticks out. So it blends in quite well. If we go a little further down here, you will have a 12-volt outlet and then cup holders and then your automatic transmission. Pretty standard automatic transmission. I'm thankful it's not a dial with a bunch of buttons. 
It's not complicated. If we throw it into reverse, you'll get a fairly high quality backup camera screen right here with a very good fish eye lens. Not a lot of manufacturers do that fish eye and I think that benefits Mazda in this case because it gives you a wider field of view when you're backing up. Now you also do have drive mode selector right below that near your shifter so you can switch into what mode you want to go. I don't know if I'd necessarily take this off road but that is an option in the CX-50. I'm going to leave it in normal. Maybe we'll take it in sport when we go to the driving section. And then down here you'll have your electronic parking brake, your automatic hold, and a physical volume dial. No, 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 I don't want to get copyright struck. You'll have a physical volume dial for your infotainment system. Now you might notice I haven't talked about the infotainment system yet. Normally that's something I would highlight uh, when we were up here on the vehicle, but this one is unique because this is not a touch screen. So as you can see, I'm touching the different buttons there. No, there is no touch screen option on this because for one, the screen is very far away. It's definitely out of your reach. But Mazda's view is that they want to keep your eyes on the road and the best way they could do that is by giving you this little dial down here and you can control the screen with this dial. Now this comes with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, everything like that, navigation, but it's all controlled through this little dial system down here as to keep your eyes on the road and you can kind of move the dial with your hand as you're looking forward and you can see out of your peripheral vision what you're doing and you can click into it without actually having to, uh, oh good, a train's going by. Guys, have you no, have you no sympathy for me during my car review? Please, I'm trying to review this Mazda. Um, but anyway, all the controls and the buttons for that infotainment system are down here and you can control and hook up obviously a phone if you'd like for the uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto features and they work the same, it's just not a touch screen. I actually stand corrected. When it comes to Apple CarPlay, it is a touch screen. Very strange that Mazda has locked off that functionality elsewhere. That is one of the other unique styling touches on this CX-50 and that goes pretty much for the most part across the Mazda lineup. And then if we continue to move down here, uh, this is another fun uh, styling cue. So the center armrest opens in two different parts. It has two different buttons and as you can see pretty standard storage down there with two USBs but it opens in two different parts. So let's say somebody's in the passenger seat they can pop that open and you can still have an armrest right here. That is very forward thinking, very convenient. I like that quite a bit. And then talking about the seats, they are very comfortable. I did have the cooling element on a little earlier and I can assure you it works phenomenally in this car. Uh, very, very comfortable seats and the leather is nice and continues that, uh, I guess it's brown accent stitching. It kind of looks a little orange, but now that I see it in the shadow, it is a brown accent. It is a brown accent stitching right there. And it continues that brown accent stitching that we found on the dashboard. Really, really like that. And then up here you'll have controls for your power panoramic moonroof. Um, it is a front sunroof section and then you have a, an, a little bit larger section in the back here. So it is split by this bar. I'm going to guess that's a continuation of the uh, B pillar bar right here, but really nice to have this much uh, sunlight coming in. It's not nice when I'm doing the car review. I'm going to close that back up because it adds this big glare to everything. But when you're driving, really, really cool. I am a sucker for sunroofs. Love to see that on here. You'll also get nice luxury features like an auto dimming mirror and a heads up display on the windshield. And for the most part, that wraps up the front end of this interior. Let's take a quick look at the back. Moving to the rear seats here on the door panel, it is hard touch plastic back here so it's not as nicely appointed as the front doors are but that's sort of to be expected on an SUV of this size. Down here you will have your window controls right there and you'll have two climate vents and two USB ports. Now you get a decent amount of leg room. I'd say I have probably two or three inches right here 
and probably about two inches of headroom, and I'm 5'9", so I'd say you could safely fit three adults back here, though you would probably have to fight over who's gonna have the second USB port since there's not three back here, but that's not a feature of the vehicle. You can figure out if you're gonna duel in gladiatorial combat or not for that USB port. And if you don't want a third person in here at all, you can just kick them out by pulling this nice little armrest down, which doubles as a spot for two cup holders. No, it's a spot for two cups. It has two cup holders. It's not a spot where you can put more cup holders. Anyway, you'll also have some storage back here. And let me hit this button. You get probably the best view of the panoramic sunroof from these back seats. So very, very nice back here. Definitely very comfortable. Alrighty, driving the CX-50. I can say even though we're in traffic right now, this is a pretty comfortably handling vehicle. It's very smooth and it definitely feels grippy on the steering wheel. Um, very tight and I prefer that, especially around corners. I think for the most part, people are probably gonna be driving these in the city and not actually taking them off road that often. So that's something that's really important. And I think that this SUV nails that in the handling department. We're about to open it up on the highway. I have not gotten this up to speed yet. So we're gonna see the acceleration and how quickly it shifts through those uh, six gears in this. I'm interested to see, because a lot of the newer SUVs have an eight speed automatic transmission. Now my truck has a six speed and I think it's fine but I know a lot of people are like eight or 10 speed or, or bust. And so let's see how this handles. Accelerating on the highway. Oh, this is wonderful. You can barely even tell it's shifting gears. Definitely not noticeable at all. And you get up to speed very quickly. And yep, we're with the flow of traffic. We're gonna merge on here. Oh yeah, very smooth. These inline four cylinders always have impressed me. You know, they're not the beefy V8s of the trucks that I normally review on this channel, but they're definitely very capable and are not slow at all. You know, old four cylinders were, but these new ones have been tuned so efficiently that especially in a smaller vehicle like this, they fly. And uh, blind spot monitoring is really nice in this. There is a couple of blind spots. This B pillar is pretty wide. Now you can see around it a little bit, but I'm really thankful this has blind spot monitoring because that'll save you in a pinch. Another cool thing with this is that the heads up display, I didn't know this, is actually gonna give you lane keeping assist. So if I start to drift a little bit on the white line, it's gonna say on the heads up display, hey, you're drifting a little bit onto this line. So that's really convenient. Keeps everything in your line of sight, which is really nice. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up my review of this CX-50. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video, but before I go, I'd like to end with a scripture verse. I always like to close my videos with Bible verses in the hopes that if you're already a Christian, I can point you towards a closer relationship with God, and if you're not, that maybe you'll be interested in pursuing a relationship with God. Today, I'm gonna to read Psalm 75, one. We give thanks to you, O God, we give thanks for your name is near. We recount your wondrous deeds. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up the video. I'll see you next time.